Uh, uh, Mr. Billingsley, thank you uh, for the briefing that you did uh, with a number of us uh, prior to your trip overseas. Thanks for visiting with me when you've gotten back. I just a couple questions on a couple of different things. Um, Iran arms embargo. Under the 2015 nuclear deal with Iran, uh, the Obama administration agreed to lift the U.S. the U.N. arms embargo on Iran after f a number of years, after five years. Uh, U.N. restrictions on the export and import of conventional weapons to Iran are set to expire October 18th of this year, coming up now in the next couple of months. The international community uh, giving Iran the green light to purchase advanced weapons, transfer weapons to terrorists, I believe threatens the security of not just the United States, but our allies and folks around the world. Um, Brian Hook, who is U.S. Special Representative to Iran, correctly explained that we are risking Iran becoming the arms dealer of choice for rogue regimes and terrorist organizations around the world. And the Trump administration is working on a new UN Security Council resolution to extend the arms embargo on Iran and do it indefinitely. Uh, given Iran's increasing aggression, what are the risks of failing to extend the UN arms embargo and export ban, and how do you recommend the United States respond if these international restrictions are lifted? Senator, that you are highlighting uh, a, an, exist, an emerging existential threat to the United States with the potential expiration of the UN arms embargo on Iran. That uh, is of the highest priority for the Secretary. Uh, he's made clear that the embargo must be extended and that Things such as snapback of the sanctions are legally available to this administration under the terms uh, on their face of the UN Security Council resolutions. The, if we fail to extend the arms embargo, uh, a number of damaging trend lines begin to emerge. In particular, we have spent enormous effort, I in my prior capacity at the Department of Treasury in particular, have spent an enormous amount of time drying up revenue streams, but also impairing the ability of Iranian networks to source these kinds of weapons. They've been forced to do so illegally uh, because of the UN embargo. If it suddenly becomes legal to export these weapons to the Iranians, all of that work falls by the wayside, or, or much of that work falls by the wayside. Moreover, we have to understand what the Iranians then do with these types of weapons. They turn around and supply them to their proxy groups. Um, so we worry greatly together with the Israelis, for instance, regarding precision-guided munitions that Hezbollah has been given by the Iranians. There's no reason to believe the Iranians wouldn't turn around and source additional weaponry from Russia and China right back to their terror proxies. The Houthis in Yemen, uh, the Hamas and Pas Palestinian Islamic Jihad uh, organizations, and oh, by the way, increasingly we have to watch out what's happening in Venezuela. And I, Carlos and I have worked very closely together over the years, and I will support him. I was just in the Caribbean uh, in one of my last Treasury roles, and I will look forward, if confirmed by this committee, to having the T Family Bureau, particularly the Political Military Affairs Bureau, uh, in strong support of our regional bureaus. I wanted to switch uh, briefly to missile defense. Uh, and during the New START Treaty debate, there was a lot of discussion about the importance of U.S. missile defense. Uh, as our country continues to face threats from around the world, I mean, it's critical that we don't restrict our own U.S. missile defense options. So the United States, I believe, must remain in charge of our own missile defense, not Russia, not other countries, as we uh, negotiate. So I'm asking if you would commit to me that in any arms control discussions with Russia, for which you would be responsible, uh, that the United States will not agree to limit our own ability to defend ourselves? Senator, absolutely. The president has made clear he will not accept limitations on missile defense. Yeah. And then with regard to the new Russian strategic weapons that we've had a chance to discuss uh, in a different setting, Russia is developing a number of new kinds of strategic nuclear weapons to evade and to penetrate or to penetrate our own ballistic missile defenses. Uh, on March of uh, 2016, President Putin announced Russia's development of new strategic nuclear weapons that he believes, he said, will render U.S. missile defenses useless. I've raised these questions in this committee to others prior to this today. Uh, the weapons include a nuclear-powered cruise missile, a nuclear-powered underwater drone that could be armed with nuclear warhead, and a hypersonic missile. Under Article 5 of uh, the New START, parties can raise their concerns about new types of strategic offensive weapons under the Bilateral Consultative Commission. Has the administration, do you know, raised concerns about the new types of weapons under this uh, commission? And does the administration believe that these new strategic nuclear weapons should be covered under, say, a new start extension? 
Senator, it's it's a mixed bag. Uh, some of these weapons will be covered simply because in the case of the nuclear hypersonics, when they put them on that ICBM, they become captured. And we've made clear that that is the case and it's not open for negotiation. But other of these weapons, I would not want to say they should be captured because we frankly don't think these weapons should exist at all. Uh, why on earth would you have a nuclear-powered, nuclear-tipped cruise missile? That is nothing more than a flying Chernobyl. Uh, just think about the radioactive plume that it would generate as it circles. Uh, there's, there's no good argument, there's no good logic for having these kinds of doomsday systems. And I've been very clear with my Russian counterpart that these are enormous uh, wastes of funds and they ought to cease and desist and abandon these kinds of destabilizing ideas. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.